Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about crosstalk analysis. Let me take you through the table of content. We are going to see the introduction about the crosstalk. What are the types of crosstalk that we are seeing in the PCB board and effect of crosstalk on the PCB board. Uh, the methods how to minimize the crosstalk and the early design phase considerations in order to remove the crosstalk from the design. Let me take you through the brief introduction of crosstalk. What is crosstalk? So basically crosstalk is a type of noise. What is crosstalk? Crosstalk is a type of noise that occur when two transmission lines try to couple with each other. So the, the reason behind crosstalk is the coupling which between between two, two transmission lines. As you can see here, there is a transmission line one and transmission line two. There are two transmission line which are available here, out of which one is an aggressor, the other one is vector. So aggressor is the transmission line that produces the noise in the victim. Uh, when does this happen? Basically when transmission line, if you see the graph of transmission line, whenever there is a switching of signal from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, whenever the switching happens, the crosstalk occurs. So there are, so, and even though crosstalk occurs between aggressor to victim as well as victim to aggressor, it happens both the ways. Okay, and the signal strength, basically the signal strength on the victim depends on four factors. First is the coupling distance, second is the coupling length, third is the impedance and fourth is the slew rate. Let me take you through the coupling distance. So coupling distance is basically the distance between the two transmission line that we are talking about. The aggressor and, vic and victim, the distance between the aggressor and victim, the more the distance, the less will be the crosstalk that we are going to discuss uh, in the few slides, in the next slides and then the coupling length. So at till what length both of them are getting coupled with each other that is known as the coupling length the impedance if there is an impedance difference between the aggressor and the victim that also causes a crosstalk and slew rate slew rate is basically delta v by delta t that tells us about the change in the voltage per unit time and that also causes the crosstalk So let us quickly discuss about the type of crosstalk. There are basically two types of crosstalk. One is near end crosstalk and the other one is far end crosstalk. So as you can see this in this diagram, there are two transmission line TL1 and TL2. Out of which TL1 is an aggressor and TL2 is a victim. So TL1 has a transmitter TX1 here and TX for transmitter 2 for the transmission line 2 and Rx1 the receiver of transmission line 1 and Rx2 the receiver of transmission line 2. So what is near end crosstalk? Let us discuss that. Near end crosstalk or we can call it as next. So basically if you want to uh, if you want to know more about next and facts there are two domains in which we are going to discuss about that first is the time domain and the other one is the frequency domain so when i talk about the time domain i am talking about the crosstalk that is happening here with respect to time and whenever i am talking about in frequency domain i am talking about the crosstalk that is happening in the uh, during the insertion and return loss that the, those are the s parameters basically so in the through s parameter model also we are going to see a type type of crosstalk that we are going to discuss in the in the next slides but currently we are going to focus on the time domain ones okay so let us discuss what is next so as you can see the transmitter tx1 is the transmitter for the transmission line one so whenever there is a switching in this transmission line one so whatever the crosstalk crosstalk at whatever the crosstalk you are seeing at tx2 that will be the near end crosstalk let me rephrase this for you the crosstalk in tx2 because of tx1 is called as near end crosstalk 
this i hope this is clear now we will discuss about the far end crosstalk so let us quickly discuss about the fixed f e x t f e x t is also known as far end crosstalk the noise that my victims rx2 the receiver is getting because of tx1 is the far end crosstalk okay far end crosstalk so it is because because of tx1 whatever the crosstalk you are going to see it rx2 that is far end crosstalk even though there are different nomenclature for next and fixed also near end crosstalk is also known as backward crosstalk and far end crosstalk is also known as forward crosstalk okay i hope that's clear if you need more clarification about them you can comment down below we'll give you the answers about it so this is how your next and fixed looks like whenever you draw a graph between next and fixed so as you can see there is an aggressor ag aggressor as well as victim so as you can see the red color graph as you can see in the diagram that shows the near end crosstalk for the aggressor and the green one as you can see here is the far end crosstalk of the aggressor okay and you can see this is this is also known as this is also known as forward crosstalk as i already told you fixed is known as forward crosstalk now we are talking about the near end crosstalk okay so if you check at the near end of the of the victim if you check at the near end of the victim as you can see there is this graph this is known as the backward crosstalk and if you check the far end of the victim reflected signal as you can see the light blue color here that is known as the far end crosstalk for it i hope that's clear if you need more clarification and if you want to learn more into the tool part of it how to do a simulation using crosstalk uh, if you want we can create a video you just comment down below if you need any clarification about it let let us discuss about few of the effects of crosstalk on the pcb board what are all the effects of crosstalk first is incre it increases the signal reflection definitely whenever there is a crosstalk so the signal reflection will increase in the victim as well as because of the victim uh, if if there is a crosstalk between two transmission lines both of them will experience the same issue of reflection there it results in radiation yes electromagnetic radiations will be increased and because of these radiations your signal switching may happen so for example if if you are sending 0101 because of this issue of signal reflection and radiation there might be a chance you will drop 0 as 1 and 1 as 0 we call as switching we call it as switching so false switching can happen okay and as as i told as i told you it's there in the third point itself so the crosstalk influence adjacent trees that result in the circuit switching circuit switching that is called circuit switching where it was supposed to be zero but it is one here so these are the common effects that we are going to see in case of crosstalk so whenever we talk about crosstalk and whenever you see these kind of issues in your board you will definitely get to know and you will definitely get to check the crosstalk analysis you have to do the crosstalk analysis on your board simulation and get the results of out of it and you have to improve that let us quickly discuss the ways how to minimize the crosstalk first is reducing the coupling length so when we talk about reducing the coupling length for example there is a transmission line tl1 here and the transmission line tl2 here so till what distance these lines are coupled plays a major role so if you reduce this distance between them this this coupling length if you reduce it the crosstalk will go down so by reducing the coupling length you can reduce the crosstalk by increasing the trace separation as you can see here between tl1 and tl2 both will be coupling so how does coupling happen basically what is coupling so what happens in case of coupling and uh, let me explain uh, give you a brief idea about coupling so coupling what happens whenever transmission line is traveling whenever the signal is traveling in the transmission line so it creates an electric and magnetic field around it okay so coupling is basically when the electrical and magnetic field of one signal is getting intersected by the magnetic field of the other the electric and magnetic field of the other whenever they Uh, they come in contact with each other or intersect each other at that time coupling happens 
okay so in order to reduce this coupling all you need to do is just increase this trace separation as soon you increase this trace separation the coupling will reduce hence the crosstalk will reduce okay and by reducing the height of dielectric material in the stack up what does this mean this basically means your the di the dielectric material that you are using so basically if i explain about the stack up here i am just giving you a brief example like there will be a a metal layer then there will be dielectric layer then there will be a metal layer okay then there will be a dielectric layer like that the if you see a typical stack up it looks like this okay so in order to reduce the crosstalk all you need to do is you need to reduce the dielectric height you all you need to do is you need to reduce the dielectric height in in order to minimize the crosstalk if you need more clarification about any of these options you just ping down below we'll just uh, try to reply you all let us quickly discuss about the considerations that we need to do in early design phase in order to eliminate the crosstalk first is the placement of the parts so what are uh, what are all the power related parts or the signal related part or high speed and low speed parts whatever the parts that you are using try to group them together uh, in a different different area in the board uh, for example if you are using if you, for example this if this is your pcb board so there will be a power section there will be a, a high speed section there will be a low speed section and uh, there will be some other other sections in that right ddr for example the ddr section is there so in under the power group just try to put all the vrms that are that that comes from a same family just try to put them together in and uh, avoid using avoid intersecting the transmission line uh, between the traces actually that we are going to see now so and the second thing is the plane alignment if i talk about the plane alignment let me explain this with an example for example if i am taking a 10 layer board in which my layer 7 is the power layer and layer 8 is my ground layer so they shouldn't be intersecting with each other because both of them will be acting as a return path to some of the signals and that may cause that may definitely cause some kind of crosstalk between them for example if i if i switch on layer 7 and i am seeing here that my power layer is this one okay this is my power plane in layer 7 and in layer 8 if i switch on layer 8 i just notice one thing like my ground plane is is over here so whenever a signal which is there at layer 6 if there are two signals at layer 6 and they are taking both of them as their return path at that time there will be an overlapping area that will definitely cause a a cross talk there okay so this is how it is and the next part is the trace spacing as i already told you whenever there are two transmission lines there are two transmission lines and all we need to do is we need to increase the spacing as soon you increase the spacing to a very higher level the cross talk will definitely reduce because there will be less coupling or no coupling so as per industrial standard we use around 2w and 3w spacings what is this w w is the width of the trace so basically everything is calculated on the basis of the width of this trace okay the fourth point is the introduction to the guard traces so what is guard traces guard traces are basically the power plane traces that are put between the two intersecting or between the two transmission line that are having cross talk for example these two are the transmission line that are having cross talk for example tl1 and tl2 so what they are going to do is they are going to introduce one more transmission line by the by the ground signal what it basically does it absorbs the extra electrical and magnetic field which is which which was earlier intersecting between uh, between both the transmission line so introduction of guard guard trace is done in order to guard both of them to intersect with each other and the first and foremost thing that you should check while uh, in the early design phase if you don't want a crosstalk in your signal the first and foremost thing that you should you should check uh, will be by reducing the reflection and introduction of termination techniques uh, we have created a separate section and a separate video for that if you want 
uh, you can check our uh, our series for this thank you for joining this short tutorial on uh, crosstalk analysis if you have any queries just comment down the uh, comment down below please do like and share the video this will motivate us to give you more content about it uh, about different different topics of high speed board design signal integrity and power integrity and do subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you can never miss an update from us thank you